Hi, welcome to Cargo Film Presents. I'm Dave. I'm Dan. Cargo Film Presents, we talk documentary film. Sometimes uh, films that we represent and sometimes films uh, that are out in the uh, marketplace. Today we're going to be talking about American Dream. American Dream is an Academy Award winning film directed by Barbara Koppel. Minnesota Governor Rudy Purpich today called out the National Guard trying to help maintain order. This is your community, not two or three of them greedy executives. It's a film that is a portrait of labor and the working class in America around 1985-86 and uh, very much echoed the the plight of unions across the country during Reagan's uh, Reagan era's political economic policies. Uh, the film visits with meat packers at the uh, Hormel Foods factory in Austin, Minnesota, and it documents the protracted uh, negotiation battles between union leaders and, and members of the union and, and uh, Hormel executives. The union members are, go on strike when the top brass at Hormel uh, cut workers' wages despite an increase in their uh, profit- profitability. Um, so, uh, you know, a couple of quite questions to get you started, Dan, I, yeah. I want to ask you, uh, I, you know, how do you react to all that pig slaughter f- footage and, and what's with all the, uh, mustaches in 1985, 86, did you notice that? I mean, everybody had a mustache. I did, you know, that, that, that was not unfamiliar to me because, you know, my, my dad, when I was looking back, when we look back at that time period, he also had a mustache. So I uh-huh. guess it was just, that was the thing, was man. Thing. Late, late seventies, you know, into the eighties, mustaches. This is mid eighties. That's mid-80s. true. Mid-80s. I, didn't, I didn't think, I didn't think that lasted, you know, through the eighties. I th- definitely thought that was a seventies thing, but Hey, maybe, maybe it just lasted a little longer in, in Minnesota. That's right. But, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. As for the pig slaughter, that was that was a little tough to to watch yeah. some of that. Uh, you know, I, I was happy there wasn't t- too much of that, and and most of the film um, took place outside of the uh, the meatpacking factory itself, and and really did focus on the um, the lives of the the meatpackers and you know the um, the real you know difficulty um, you know they had in and how. Um, you know, the strike really, really tore up the community. And I think, you know, on the, um, on the surface of it, you think, oh, this will be a kind of a dry film, you know, it's about labor negotiations and sort of battles between um, the meatpacking workers and uh, corporate management and their own parent union. But I have to say, you know, it had a lot of, it packed a lot of drama Fist fights in union halls, negotiators, you know, flipping out, brother against brother, meat packers crying. I mean, you know, I think Barbara did kind of an amazing job of, of really gaining access into the into this community. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, you know, you read the synopsis of this film and and you think, you know, uh, why why do I want to watch this? But it, it does capture a lot of drama. We got to give up twenty three percent wages and thirty percent cut in benefits. When the company's making thirty million dollars, just the the fact that there's the solidarity of these uh, union um, union members and their camaraderie and their loyalty to one another. I mean, these are people that are tortured by their decision of uh, their loyalty over providing for their family and going to work, or uh, their loyalty towards uh, the union, which you know back in the 1980s, I guess, was still a going concern. I mean, it feels uh, like ancient history now at, in 2020, but clearly, you know, what the film does do is capture this era where there is this um, dying uh, battle uh, that the unions are waging in, in, against corporate America. It's, it's an era of economic policies and uh, a serious turn to the right of how um, corporate America is, is is dealing with unions, there's no sympathy or empathy there. You know, it documents that the end of that shift where, you know, this is kind of the last nail in the coffin for union power in America. And, and, it's, and you witness the desperation uh, in the union members and leaders, as well as you see the, uh, the bravado of the, of the corporate executives uh, realizing that they have the upper hand and, and they won't lose it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I was, you know, watching this film, you, you, you know, you're thinking, well, 
um, you know, why doesn't it get as, as much recognition as, you know, Barbara Koppel's earlier Oscar winning film? Um, you know, she was two for two at, at this point, Harlan County, USA, which is about a minor strike in, in Kentucky as well. And, you know, that film may be a little bit more clear cut who the sort of heroes and the villains were. You, you had minor striking against the company and the company using really strong handed and, and violent tactics to beat back the miners. Um, but in uh, American Dream, you know, you really see the the division within the union movement itself. So you have the local P9, you know, saying that these wage cuts are unacceptable and, you know, them trying to sort of hang on and preserve, um, you know, quality of life and the American dream for themselves and, and their parent union, the ICFW is saying, listen, you know, we're at a moment of, you know, and high anti-union sentiment, you know, the Reagan administration had just a few years before, um, essentially fired the air traffic controllers union. Um, and so, you know, you see this battle going on within within the sort of union at a local level and the national level it, itself. And, and so it's a really kind of fascinating to get those differing viewpoints and, and perspectives in, in the film. And, and it really kind of um, tugs your sympathies throughout to see, you know, what's the best kind of strategy here? Is it to say, you know, this is, this is a, you know, let's take a, a stand here. We're not gonna, allow our wages to be cut and concessions to be made any further? Or, you know, is it a sort of looking at what the national union is saying? And, and you know, it's going to be, it's doomed, guys. Like, you should accept what's on the table. And, you know, this is going to end really badly um, for you. Yeah, it does, it does uh, provoke a lot of, of uh, sympathy for the union leaders who, you know, do their best, their best to, you know, put on a brave face and rally the troops. Uh, but but it, it becomes clear uh, that they are are fighting a losing battle and and uh, it really does um, uh, you know create a lot of conflict amongst uh, its members. You know one one of the things I really like uh, enjoyed about this film you know are just the people of of this town. I think yeah. uh, you know uh, Barbara and her team certainly you know found uh, this town and 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 these are people that are you know the definition of salt of the earth you know even when they're arguing even though yeah there are moments of of shouting and as you said uh fist fights but you know for most of it there's a lot of discussion around contentious issues about people's livelihood and and you know they they speak rather respectfully and politely which you know i remarked on you know you know, uh, living in the day and age that we do where, where things get out of control, uh, you know, uh, fairly quickly. I mean, you know, even the, the sheriff of Austin, Minnesota, has, uh, uh, caught his name was Wayne a good nature. You yes, know? that's right. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, you know, you really, you really felt for these, uh, individuals only be because not only did they open themselves up to the filmmakers, but they are, they were just, you know, truly good people being, you know, pained by the decisions of, uh, of, of deciding how to best go about handling, um, you know, this very complex uh, situation at a time in American labor and history that clearly was uh, a defining, you know, uh, turning point. I'm proud to be a wife of a hog cutter. I'm proud of the products, but I don't like the way they're treating my family or anyone else who's ever worked for that plant. Excuse me, this is a tragedy for all of us. I was born and raised here. You know, my, uh, I remember my members of my family that are buried here. These people are my friends on all sides. All these are nicely defined characters in the film with terrific, uh, you know, dialogue, uh, you know, that couldn't have been scripted uh, much better. And, and I think that's the great thing about documentary film is when you're documenting people that have skin in the game, you know, there's an emotion and an edge there uh, and you mix that with principles, you know, they speak from the heart. It's not rehearsed. It's not self-aware. It's really raw and, and it communicates, you know, their, their truths. And um, I took down a couple of lines that, you know, kind of resonated, uh, you know, things like, you know, somebody says, you know, people who believe in what they're doing are some of the most dangerous people in the world. I mean, that's just a, a great line, you yeah. know, or, um, you know, towards the end of the film, you know, they, when they, the realization hits that, that um, you know, unions uh, position in the uh, labor force has been diminished, you know, someone says, you know, it, it can't be just, it can't just be dealt with at the picket line or at the bargaining table, which is, you know, perfect epitaph uh, to, to, 
to the 80s of, of what organized labor uh, became. So just, you know, terrific little morsels like that that are peppered throughout the film. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is the best, I think, you know, of observational cinema. You know, Barbara Koppel comes from that tradition of, you know, Penna Baker and the Maisel brothers. And, you know, the access that she gets to those, you know, to negotiations, to people's homes, allowing them to, yeah, just, just open up and speak truthfully and from the heart is, is sort of what's at, 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 you know, what makes this tradition of documentary cinema so powerful and, and so strong. So, I mean, that's pretty remarkable. And, and the fact that she, you know, stuck it out over, over what, I mean, we should say that the, you know, the strike, I think was one of the longest and most contentious in, in the United States history. And, and Barbara was there for most of it as it, you know, as it continues to go on for, I think over, over seven months, you know, the, you see yeah. this happen and you see the sort of the, some of the will of the, the meat packers who, you know, as you said, are, um, you know, just struggling with this question of, you know, how do we make a living? How do we provide for our families? But at the same time, we're, you know, we're union people. This was um, a union town. So, you know, people certainly don't want to cross the picket line and, and become scabs. And those are some of the, you know, really powerful scenes in the film when, you know, uh, you see some people's friends and neighbors and their coworkers who, you know, are, are crossing that line to, you know, to go and work in, in the factory um, while their people stay outside and continue to protest and picket. Yeah, you, I mean, you said it earlier, you know, there were also, they, they showed two brothers, you know, one of them who decided not to cross the picket line and one who was just absolutely pained yeah. about, uh, you know, doing so. And he eventually does, you know, and, and that one, that his, other, his brother says, you know. Oh, I won't have any problems really until he crosses, if he crosses that line, the scab, then there's nothing worse than a scab. So how can you have anything to do with a scab? It's, it's excruciating to watch. It's, uh, you know, and that's what the film does capture, uh, you know, so well, you know, and, and you have a, a group of men breaking down crying, you know, because they can't provide for their family. And it's just a, a, a blow to their pride that uh, they, they have to go through this yet, you know, they, they have this loyalty to their union members and, um, and, and don't want to cross the, the picket line. You know, you have also the uh, indecision of the union leaders, yeah. you know, where you can see it in their face. They're struggling with uh, trying to make this work, but it's slipping, you know, through their fingers. And, and, and while they're putting on this, this brave front and trying to still rally the, the troops and le let them believe that they've got a, a fair shot at, at getting their uh, wages back, uh, you know, their, their, their faces betray them. And, and you realize that they're not feeling, you know, too confident anymore, you know, so there's so many in those layers of, of dramas, as, as we keep mentioning, that is beautifully documented in this film. So, you know, if you're, if you like watching a documentary film, you know, uh, this, this is a, a very good example of that very uh, style that, captures uh you know real emotion and and, and real uh, tension that uh, will surprise you as to how much you you will enjoy it yeah absolutely we should you know uh also note um some some trivia we always like some documentary trivia in the film the uh, yeah. local union leader you know his his sort of rallying call to arms in this in this kind of crusade for um you know, ending wage, wage freezes and, and concessions for the meat packers is a Bruce Springsteen song, which is the uh, right. no retreat, no surrender. So that's mm -hmm. their kind of rallying cry, which is great. And I did read that, um, you know, at a certain point, Barbara was uh, running out of money for the project, as most documentary filmmakers uh, will know. It's very hard to, to finance and raise money for docs. And I guess at one point she called Bruce Springsteen and said, you know, listen, we, we need your help. And you know, we need uh, some financing for the film. And uh, apparently he wrote her a check. So Bruce is, uh, he's listed as a producer on oh, the is. film. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, so. I had heard that, uh, I had read that someplace as well. Uh, and here's another little uh, trivia tidbit for you. Austin, uh, Minnesota is also home to the uh, Spam Museum. So <laughs> if right. you're ever in Austin. Spam Town USA. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yeah, so, you know, plenty to do in Austin, but anyhow, you know, so um, definitely check it out. The film is, you know, it was won an Academy Award in 1991, I believe, right? Yeah, that's right. Right. 
and is now having its uh, second life. Many years later, uh, you can see it on multiple platforms, uh, including uh, the, uh, on Criterion uh, channel as of October 1st, as well as the Sundance uh, Now channel and uh, Topic, uh, the, the new streamer from uh, the folks uh, over at Field of Vision. So the film is out there. We uh, highly recommend uh, you check it, checking it out. Any uh, final thoughts? No, you know, no retreat, no surrender. There you go. That's right, baby. <laughs>